Science has reached the point now where if there's a question at the front of our minds, there's usually an answer for it. But we're still yet to find out the answers to some of the biggest questions around. Join us today at The Hub as we discover 10 huge questions that science can't answer. The Hub can't answer all of your questions in this video, but luckily all of our other great videos are filled with interesting facts that will keep your brain busy. Click the subscribe button before we begin so you can make sure to stay up to date with all the latest facts. Why do we dream? We learn more about the human brain every day, but scientists are still pretty much in the dark about one important thing, the reason why we dream. That's not to say we haven't invested time and money into figuring it out, but nobody has come up with a proper, conclusive answer yet. What we do know is as follows. Humans dream when they enter the REM stage of sleep, which is the deepest. There are thought to be five stages of sleep, and we dream when we hit the deepest stage, which is when our body recovers and heals itself. There are a few reasons as to why we dream. One is that dreaming sorts through from what we've seen and done throughout the day. It files things in the brain. It's thought that dreaming could be a way to plow through all of these hundreds and thousands of inputs to decide what's important to keep. Another theory suggests we dream in order to support our memories. If this theory is correct, it says dreaming moves things from the short term to the long term memory. But this doesn't answer why some people always remember their dreams and some people can't keep their story straight five minutes after waking up. How do we cure cancer? A common misconception with cancer is that it's only one disease. In actual fact, cancer is the broad name for a type of diseases which can manifest in a few different ways. This is why when people announce they have cancer, they always specify which type and where. It would be impossible to calculate just how much money around the world has been dedicated to curing cancer, but scientists aren't there yet. We see pioneering treatment after treatment which promises to alter a cell or gene to cure the horrible disease, but it's all been to no avail. The problem with trying to find the answer to a disease as complex as cancer is that it's difficult to know where to start. Just when you manage to look into one specific element of the body, another external feature will come into play and we're all back to square one. There's always another factor to consider. That's not to say we haven't beaten some elements of cancer, at least when it comes to survival rates. Those who suffer the disease nowadays have a far higher chance of survival compared to even 10 years ago, so there is hope we'll get there one day. Is God real? When you look at the history of the planet, there are two distinct origins. The first is the Big Bang Theory, and the second is religion. Scientists, basing their knowledge entirely on what is proven, have no way of proving that God is real. So they're firmly in the camp of believing our world came about through scientific measures. But similarly, they also can't prove that God isn't real, leaving billions of people bouncing between two theories in the middle. But one thing that baffles scientists is just how convenient our circumstances are. We're at the perfect distance from the sun to receive its heat but not get burnt. We have the right amount of water and also the right amount of atmospheric pressure. When you compare planet Earth to the rest of our solar system, we seem to be the only planet in the right place at the right time. Sure, we don't know for definite whether there are creatures on other planets that have adapted to their living conditions, but it all just seems a bit convenient, you know? But the conditions of a god are subjective, and many argue that if a god was so all-loving and all-seeing, why would they let so many horrible things happen in the world? What happens in the afterlife? It seems the only way to tell whether a god is real or not is to wait until we all die and see what happens next. Unfortunately, to our knowledge, there's no Wi-Fi or telephone signal in the afterlife, making it pretty darn difficult for those who are there to give us a bell and let us know the results. You can see the Catch-22 scenario we've got going on here. People have tried to prove what happens when we die, and you'll likely have seen at least a handful of viral videos of ghosts moving broomsticks or closing the windows in their loved ones' houses to make a point. But scientists have no ultimate way of proving whether these are true occurrences or whether somebody's just got a bit trigger-happy with their editing software. Those who have experienced near death often come forward with reports of bright light, but we know enough to assume this is more to do with the brain losing oxygen than anything else. Scientists have tried to look into this part of life, but with no clear answers. A study found that the dead person's mind and consciousness continue to work, at least for a short time, meaning the deceased can recognize their own death, but by then, they're not fit to tell us. How many planets are there? If you paid attention in school, you'll know of the eight or nine planets in our solar system, depending on whether or not your teachers considered Pluto a real planet. Something interesting you might have noticed when learning about the solar system is that it's always referred to as how many planets do we have right now. There's always the assumption that there could be more planets floating out there waiting to be discovered. And let's not even get us started on the solar system as a whole. It's thought there are other systems in the universe that we've got no knowledge of yet. The system is made up of planets, moons, asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. 
most of which we've never seen or heard. And just to make things even more confusing, most stars host their own planets, so there are likely tens of billions of other solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy alone. Many scientists think our solar system formed from a giant rotating cloud of gas and dust known as the solar nebula, but it's another thing we'll probably never prove for sure. How many species of animal are there? The latest calculation is that we have about 8.7 million species of animal on Earth, although scientists won't put a proper figure on this, so the rounded up or down version is give or take 1.3 million. That's a lot of leeway if you ask us. This can be broken down into 6.5 million species on land and 2.2 million in the ocean. Over the years, top scientists have put the number of species at anything from 3 million to 100 million. That's an awful lot of bugs that we probably haven't heard of yet, and we're not sure we'd want to either. To make matters even more intricate, a new biology study estimates 85% of all species and 91% of those in the sea haven't actually been discovered yet. Unsurprisingly, the number keeps changing due to a number of factors. Animals are going extinct and dying out due to environmental damage, but new species are also being created due to evolution and cultural development. In the animal kingdom, as soon as one door closes, another door opens, it seems. In 1758, Swedish scientist Carl Linnaeus created and published the first system still used to formally name and describe species. It's grown by 1.25 million since then. Is aging inevitable? With constant adverts claiming to be the best for anti-aging or anti-wrinkling, you might think that aging is something people can choose not to do, and one day it might be. For the meantime, scientists have almost concluded that aging is inevitable. But if you look into new surgical procedures, it seems more and more parts are becoming a choice. Joanna Maisel, a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology in the States, says that there's logically, theoretically, and mathematically no way out because aging is a multicellular process. Eventually, as we age, our cells stop reproducing at such a fast rate, which is why our hair goes gray and our bodies start sagging. If scientists could figure out the best way to prevent all the cells from going through this process, then we might be able to halt aging entirely. But this is virtually impossible, and maybe a problem for the scientists in the year 3000 to figure out. Not to mention, there's a vested interest in making sure people eventually pass away, because our population is growing all the time, and quite simply, soon we could run out of room. What's the maximum capacity for intelligence? If you've seen the film Limitless, then you'll have had a brief insight into what it's like to have one of the most intelligent brains in the world. However, you might also have noticed that being limitless isn't necessarily a good thing, and it ends up being a burden and pretty unhealthy more than anything else. But no one is truly sure just how large the capacity for intelligence is. Scientists try to figure out just how much can be stored by looking at things like IQ tests, but a lot of these boil down to memory rather than intelligence. A really interesting way science has looked at brain capacity is through people who have suffered brain damage, by looking at the before and after structure and breakdown of the brain. They've had a slight insight into where everything is stored and how everything works. But another difficulty is looking at the variety of subjects people can succeed in. Why is it that most people are either book smart or creative, but not excellent at both? We know all about the left side and right side of the brain, but other than spending hours in the library, is there a way to figure out what the maximum intelligence is? Do aliens exist? Does a day go past when we don't hear more alien conspiracy theories? Who are these little green men we hear about all the time anyway? And why are they always green? While we build up a pretty picture in our heads of what aliens supposedly look like, science is having a hard time proving their existence. You become aware of another supposed alien sighting at least once a month, and those spooky circular patches on fields clearly come from our friends from another planet too, right? The most likely answer when it comes to alien existence is pretty vague. Scientists think that there's a high chance something of an alien matter does exist on a different planet, but it's unlikely to be at the same developmental stage as us. And this is a scary fact on its own. Sure, we wouldn't mind coming across some baby aliens that are similar to pets, perhaps, but what if these aliens were far more developed? Then we'd be in real trouble. British scientist Stephen Hawking pointed out that we'd be at risk sending signals to aliens because if they spotted them, they'd already have the advantage and could be liable to attack us and ruin our planet completely. What's at the bottom of the ocean? Nature documentaries give us a great insight about the creatures that live under the water, but as you've already learned, we still don't know a lot about what actually lurks far underneath. While shoals of brightly colored fish or long gangly jellyfish don't seem like too scary a prospect to come across, we dread to think just what sort of things live right at the very bottom. The deepest part of the ocean is the Mariana Trench in the Western Pacific Ocean. National Geographic have done some exploring in the deepest, darkest parts of the underwater world, but frustratingly, most of it remains shrouded in mystery. The reason for this boils down to how difficult it is to access the Mariana Trench. The conditions make it almost impossible to breathe, 
and attempts at filming when it's so dark and has such a high pressure fail far more times than they succeed. Not to mention, we don't know what could happen if you dropped the camera down there and it just never returned. Are you as spooked out as us yet? Most things that have been discovered that live right at the bottom are incredibly weird looking, thanks to the strange characteristics they've had to develop in order to survive where no one else goes. Most of them are blind, but have sharper senses that we wouldn't want to get too close to. Have these questions got you thinking twice about everything you've ever known? Great, it's not just us then. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Thanks.